So I've been using Hyperland now for about three weeks and I've learned quite a lot about it. I've been messing around with it quite a bit and I've customized it just the way I like it. So what I thought I'd do today is talk to you about 10 tips, tricks, and tools that I've discovered over the course of the last three weeks that I, I thought would help you if you've decided to start using Hyperland as well. So we're gonna try to do this in under 10 minutes so I can have a fancy title. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we do, if you'd hit the thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it, it'd really help the channel. So the first tip is that you should really consider building Hyperland from source. Now, I know a lot of people that scares them away, but because of the fast nature of the development of Hyperland, building it from source ensures that you're always getting the most up-to-date bug fixes. Now, it also means that things can break faster, but I found that you actually have a better chance of getting your bugs fixed by using the source version instead of the ones that live in your repositories. Because the ones that live in your repositories, especially if you're using something like OpenSUSE or Debian or Ubuntu or whatever, chances are those are gonna be pretty old. And if you use those, you're gonna be living with those bugs for quite some time. So I highly recommend using it from source, but it is a cautionary recommendation because it does have some downsides. So that's the first one. The second one is kind of tied to that is that you should definitely report bugs. Now. Truthfully, you should report bugs on all open source software that you use, but on Hyperland it's especially important because they do such a good job of actually fixing them. So I've had several bugs that I've found over the course of the last three weeks, two or three, and I've reported all of them and all three of them were fixed usually by the next morning if it was possible for them to be fixed at all. So the fact that it was that fast and because I'm using the built from source version, I was able to get my bugs fixed very, very fast. Now that's obviously not a guarantee that your bugs are gonna be fixed that fast, but the fact that it was possible is really good, but you're not gonna have that experience if you don't report the bugs. So the next one is actually to use a plugin manager of some sort. Now I use Piperland, which isn't really a plugin manager, it's more a collection of plugins, but there are a couple different ones that you could use. I chose Piperland because it has the features that I want. And specifically, Piperland allows me to do things like have a scratch pad system set up. I have all of my scratch pads set up so I can actually just use a scratch pad on all of my bindings that I want them to be. And it just works very, very well. Piperland has a few other things that you can do with it, but that's the main reason why I use Piperland because it does scratch pads the way that I want them to be done. But there are other Hyperland plugins that you can use and Hyperland plugin managers that you can use to extend Hyperland beyond just what it does out of the box. So I would highly recommend checking the documentation for setting up a plugin manager. The next one is that you, if you use Discord, you should definitely not use the native client because if you use the native client, half the things aren't going to work for you probably. Now it will work okay and it might appear that it works okay but especially if you are someone who uses the voice chat functionality and the screen share functionality of discord you're going to want to use something other than the stock client because it doesn't work very well with portals so what i would recommend is use something like webcord which is what you're seeing here on screen and that allows you to if you go into a chat room or whatever, it would allow you to share your screen with the native portal that Hyperland uses. So use Webcord instead of Discord if you're going to be using the screen share functionality of Discord. My next tip is for you to mess around with your animations. So Hyperland is known for its animations and as you can see, I have set them up in a certain way, but it's not the only way for it to be done. So I would highly recommend checking out the documentation for how to change the animations because there are many different curves that you can use. Basically that just changes how the animations are brought in and out on the screen and you can mess around with that to your heart's content to the point where you can have a very unique animation set up on your system and it just looks really cool. Now, it can get very complicated very fast and that can take some time, but if you set it up so you have animations to the point where you like them, it can make Hyperland even more unique. The next one I have for you is actually a pair of tools and this is Grim and Slurp. Grim and Slurp are actually things that really should be just one program, but they went super Unix philosophy. Grim and Slurp basically just allow you to take a screenshot. So I have it set up via key binding and that will allow me to do things like that and take that as, as a screenshot. The problem is, is that Grim is what's actually taking the screenshot, but it needs 
coordinates from the screen over what portion of the screen you want it to actually take the screenshot of. That's where Slurp comes in. Slurp will basically allow you to gather those coordinates, plug them into Grim so that it knows what portion of the screen you're wanting to take a screenshot with. So you want to have both of those and you can go into your Hyperland configuration file and do something like this line right here. Basically what this does is it'll, it uses Grim and Slurp to take your screenshots. So you'll want something like that in your configuration file. So my next tip is to create a key binding or a set of key bindings to change the volume on your system. So you can do this right inside of the hyperlink config and you can basically use whatever keys you want. There is a, a key binding for a dedicated volume key if your keyboard has one. I don't have one so I just use Alt and A but you can do that with WPCTL which comes with Hyperland and then you can use that to set the volume. I'm using 5% increments up and down. That way you can change the volume on your system just with a key binding. My next tip is that if you are someone who really likes to do organization of your configuration files, use Hyperland's ability to source files in order to make your configuration file more organized. This is what my Hyperland configuration file actually looks like. I've went and sourced each of the little pieces out into little other files that makes them more manageable and it's just something that I really like to do. So if you're kind of like me, you can do something like this to make your hyperlink configuration more modular. It also makes it easier to switch things in and out if you were to do things like different themes or if you wanted to have different animations in certain situations, you could do something like that. So my next tip really only applies for people who have multiple monitors, but by default, there's no actual way for you to switch your focus from monitor, one monitor to the other. and that's okay because not everybody uses a multiple monitor setup, but if you do, you want that functionality. So by using the focus monitor dispatch, you can make it so that you can use a key binding to switch back and forth between all of your monitors. Basically what I've set it up for is I use mod tab and it basically rotates between my three monitors in one direction. I can use mod shift tab to rotate the other direction. And this just makes it very, very easy for me to take my focus from one monitor to the other. And finally, if you use a bar, no matter what bar you're going to use, what you're going to want to do is make sure you have a key binding that will kill it and restart it. So you can do this in any number of ways. I've chosen to do it with an external script. Basically, this just allows me to, to do mod control P and that will kill Waybar like so and actually restart it. Now, I found this to be absolutely necessary for Waybar because sometimes weird things show up in Waybar that really shouldn't be there. Also, it crashes a lot for me for whatever reason. So I have a key binding that will actually just relaunch it if it does crash. And you can do this if you want to just have a way to kill it automatically so you wouldn't have to have it relaunch it. You could just set it to kill it. So either way, I'd, I'd highly recommend having a binding to either kill and relaunch your bar or at least kill it that way you can have the opportunity to refresh the configuration of your bar especially if your bar doesn't have the ability to hot reload as a feature which way bar does not so those are the 10 tips tricks or and tools that i've discovered over the course of the last three weeks there are actually a few more that i could have made but i wanted to make sure that this was a fairly short video so if you have tips or tricks for hyperland that you'd like to share you can leave those in the comment section below you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel is not anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very much for your support i truly do appreciate it you can also support me by heading over to the store at shop.thelinkscast.org there you'll find a whole bunch of merchandise that'll help support the channel as well thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time